Forgiveness is elusive, mysterious. It is an idea, an ache. For centuries, forgiveness has belonged to religion. It was expressed in prayer and meditation. Though its practice varies, it is embedded in all of our religious texts. The genesis of this film, Forgiveness, A Time to Love and A Time to Hate, is an interesting story, and it's unusual for me the way it happened. Um, generally, I choose all of my films, whether it's about life in a monastery or the McCarthy era or the spiritual aftershocks of 9-11, the millennial pope, a range of subjects for the last 35 years, and I really choose them myself. But this one came literally out of the blue. I'm sitting, looking down at the Mormon tabernacle, trying to figure out the right closing shot for that film. And I get this phone call from a total stranger, Paul Dietrich, who int introduces himself as a wealthy financier who has a passion for spiritual subjects, above all forgiveness, knows my work, thinks it would be a perfect fit, because I do, that is my beat, the spiritual landscape, and offers me a fully funded film, which is something of an oxymoron in filmmaker's language, fully funded film, with total artistic license. A monk never knows if he's been a success or a failure of being a monk until uh, after he's dead. You'll never know now. He's a king. He's the chief priest of the Christian church. There is something that happens when we see this pope. I'm seeing Peter. Normally, I would just jump. I mean, what a great offer. But this was a time that I actually withdrew. I, the subject was so vast, infinite in its boundaries, intellectually and geographically. And I'd just gotten off the Mormons, which was a saga unto itself. It's a four hour film, it took almost four years to make, and it too was huge, and I promised myself as my treat that I would have this narrowly focused subject of my own choice. So this was scary, it was big. And choosing films for a filmmaker is a big deal because these films can take four years of your life, three years of your life, you just don't jump into it. So I, I did what I always did, I said, I'll, I'll take a month or two and think about it, Paul, and I'll get back to you. And I do that with all, all the films, and within a few weeks I was hooked. And sometimes I think back on that and I wonder, what was it about this subject that drew me in so quickly? And I came to believe that a variety of things I discovered along the way about forgiveness that made this film so compelling and so irresistible and overrode all my objections. One of them is that I quickly discovered that there is no consensus about what forgiveness is and what it's becoming, so that was catnip to me. I thought, this is truly gonna be a complicated show. Where is forgiveness rooted among those who don't Hold to a personal God. Can we forgive without God? Yes. I believe most of us have a moral compass inside of us. There's tremendous conflict when it comes to forgiveness. For some people, it must be unconditional. Unconditional forgiveness? No, there are conditions. Repentance, contrition, reparations, and ultimately justice. If I'm waiting for her to apologize in a way that works for me, I, I'm, I, I actually think I'd be waiting the rest of my life. And I also think that forgiveness comes with this sort of aura of sentimentality and piety and unexamined assumptions about forgiveness always being the right path. And I thought, well, you know, that's something, that's a complication that I will, I turn that into a positive. I will complicate that. I will make people think about it differently because uh, it is more complicated. And then, of course, I discovered that there's this new forgiveness that has entered the world that is sort of resonant and powerful and timely. While it was once a uniquely religious word, forgiveness now is changing. And there is no consensus about what it is. 
and what it is becoming. In a way, I don't think it has been before in the last 40 or 50 years. You know, forgiveness has always been a theological concept, something that seemed to belong to the churches, to, in the, you know, it belonged in the pulpit, in the confessional, and then it just really just burst out of the confines, I feel, of, of religion and hit the streets and is shaping the language of therapy and restorative justice and it lives on television, afternoon television, it's migrated in the political arena. So there was a timeliness and relevance to forgiveness that drew me in. And then finally, and I think most importantly, I think I came to discover in this period that I was thinking about whether I should make this film, that this topic mattered more than really anything else I had chosen over the last 35 years. And then I spent a week in a hospice, and I think that was a clincher, because at the end of sitting at the bedside of dying patients over a week, in and out of rooms and talking to the families, but really sitting with people preparing for that final act, I discovered that there really wasn't any other subject but forgiveness in that hospice. He was unarmed. And I shot him. I ask God to forgive me every day. It hurts, Steve. God forgive me. God forgive me. So within a month, I called Paul, all my reservations overridden, uh, though I remained still scared, still overwhelmed to some extent by the vastness of the subject, but willing to go forward. 